protein kinase C. Formation of the second messengers phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate PIP2 and phosphatidylinositol 3,4,5-trisphosphate PIP3. Phosphatidylinositol, or P1, is a phospholipid which is anchored in the cytoplasmic layer of the cell membrane. PI4 kinase generates phosphatidylinositol 4-phosphate, abbreviated PIP, by phosphorylating the inositol ring of PI. PI5 kinase may phosphorylate this compound to PIP2. Finally, PI3 kinase generates PIP3. Here, phosphatidylinositol is depicted in green at the cytosolic side of the cell membrane. At first, PI is phosphorylated by PI kinase in position 4. Subsequently, a PIP kinase phosphorylates the 5 position. PIP2 is generated. PI3 kinase generates PIP3 from PIP2. As an antagonist of PI3 kinase, the phosphatase P10 can hydrolyze the phosphate group in 3 position to generate PIP2. Formation of the second messengers diacyglycerol DAG and inositol trisphosphate IP3. PIP2 is an anchor for phospholipase C, abbreviated PLC. PLC hydrolyzes PIP2 into diacyglycerol, or DAG, and inositol trisphosphate, or IP3. IP3 opens intracellular calcium channels and releases calcium from intracellular stores. As a consequence, the intracellular calcium concentration increases. The second messenger calcium exerts many functions. As an example, calcium binds to protein kinase C, or PKC. In a positive feedback loop, calcium-bound PKC is able to bind to membrane anchor DAG, which leads to the activation of the enzyme. Downstream effects of protein kinase C. After its activation by calcium and DAG, protein kinase C activates many proteins, which stimulate proliferation and growth. As a prominent example, PKC activates the kinase RAF by binding to the complex of RAF and the RAF kinase inhibitor protein RKIP. PKC transfers a phosphate group to RKIP, which then dissociates from RAF. Free RAF, which is no longer associated with RKIP, is active and may exert the same effects as RAF, activated by the RAS GTP complex in the MAP kinase pathway. DAG kinase is an additional substrate of protein kinase C. After its activation, DAG kinase phosphorylates DAG to phosphatidic acid, which is no longer able to activate PKC. Thus, DAG kinase forms a negative feedback loop within the protein kinase C pathway. The next example of an important PKC substrate is insulin receptor substrate 1, or IRS1. Phosphorylated IRS1 activates PI3 kinase and many other proteins.